The roundtable is here now. ABC's political analyst Matthew Dowd, Oklahoma Congressman Tom Cole, former New Mexico Governor Bill Richardson, and our own Cokie Roberts. All kinds of pushback from the White House this week when all of us said, what? Did he just say there's no strategy? <laughs> is there a strategy? Well, I applaud the president for accidentally saying the truth um, <laughs> of this. I think this has been a problem for us in the United States for almost 20 years, which is, is we haven't really had a real formal vision and strategy on foreign policy. It's all been a debate over tactics. We've had a plethora of tactics and a paucity of vision and strategy in the midst. And in the midst of that, both sides debate, should we do this tactic, should we do this tactic, should we do this tactic, should we do this tactic? So I congratulate the president. He said we don't have a strategy, we don't have a strategy. And part of the problem is we're using military action, and this has been well, the problem. Now, I now, one of the things he says, he didn't have a strategy for military action in Syria. So can anybody name the strategy well, the that White we House, have? The White House says the strategy is that Secretary Kerry is now in the region and trying to put together the country countries in the region who don't agree on anything except that ISIS is a danger, is a threat, and that that is the strategy. But it is clearly something that the Congress isn't buying, and even uh, Senator Feinstein, the chairman of the Intelligence Committee, is saying the president is cautious, perhaps in this case too cautious. Can you well, name the strategy? Well, I, I think the president probably should have said we're developing a policy, a new policy. I applaud him, too. I think this is a potential 9-11 moment. These are very serious foreign policy issues. I mean, look at this president. He's been faced with the Arab Spring explosion all over the Middle East. Let's do a new policy carefully. Let's learn more about ISIS. Yeah, we're learning more. They're bad. But what is their goal? Can they reach the American homeland? Can they, uh, are they a regional power? Obviously, they're a threat to the Kurds. They're a threat in Iraq. But at the same time, Martha, I think you can't go it well, alone. The president, you have the, the to build. The president's own national security advisors are all saying they're a terrible threat, that well, they have to be gotten but, rid but of. But you do have to have a coalition. The good news here is that a lot of entities fear these people, like Hezbollah, right. like Iran, like Iraq, Turkey. like Turkey, like uh, Qatar like the United Arab Emirates. So there's great potential to build a coalition. My point here is let's do it right. Uh, let's get the Congress involved. Let's take this to the and Congress. Speaking of the, and <laughs> speaking of the Congress, lots, lots, <laughs> all, of, all lots of talk that he has to move faster. You heard everybody in all the pieces this morning say we have to act now. Well, I think, frankly, there's uh, way too much uh, uh, emphasis on acting now and doing something immediately instead of being smart about what we do. I think the elements of strategy are already there. We know we're going to use air power. We know we're going to use special operators. We know we're going to have to build alliances on the ground. That's a very doable thing, as the governor said. Uh, and we know probably uh, we'll be involved in training and supplying and equipping indigenous forces. Uh, so those things are there. They're tougher in Syria than they are in Iraq. We don't have any pre-existing relationships there. But I think at the end of the day, look, I think there's a consensus that we are going to do things, but again, being a little bit thoughtful. But, 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 Matthew, I, and I want to say this too. I was in Iraq in January, and in January, they were talking about how bad things were there and the danger of ISIS, and it wasn't just January, it was well, back last year. So why? Don't we have a strategy? For first Syria? of all, Syria's I, been going on for years. First of all, I want to say I think it's awful, awful ironic that we have a group now that has treats women as second-class citizens, ISIS, and has done horrible things to women and children. It is, but is named after a female deity from Egypt, which I think is very <laughs> funny. I think actually, I take a look at this. This is an awful, tragic, awful situation. But I actually think it's a there's a bright spot in this for us as a country in our foreign policy, and that's this. For too long, we had war as a concept. War was a war on terrorism which is a concept. It never works when you don't have a specific country or a specific enemy, and therefore you don't know what the definition of victory now. To me, this ISIS is now in Iraq and in Syria is like what happens in a room. You put all the cheese in a room and all the rats come run into the room and you know where they are. Well, For the first time, that's what we, heard our we know where all the rats are. Earlier, that this, but Congressman Cole, what you just said sounded so uh, rational, and I wonder about your colleagues in Congress. Well, I mean, look, they have not been rational. We late. can spend a lot of time pointing over how we got here. Well, I, I do think the president made some bad mistakes, and so did former Prime Minister Al Maliki in pulling out of Iraq and, uh, you know, not taking this threat seriously earlier. Having said that, again, I still think the elements are there to be successful, and I think there can be a bipartisan... And, and what about if we start going into Syria, and you did hear our experts talk about that, it, it's 
probably just air power, not more than that. Well, so we, do I we just we keep need, at them? We need better intelligence about their objectives, their but capabilities. But how, how do you get better intelligence well, if you're not on the ground? That well, was one of the no, problems no, in I, Iraq. I think we have our intel capabilities are substantial. And I think you bring allies into the picture, too, to get collect that intelligence. But at the same time, I think you... You've got to be careful. This is a momentous decision. And again, I think the president was right to say, okay, well, we're going to do the airstrikes. We're doing them in Iraq. Do we do them in Syria? I would advise them probably yes, but let's do it in a targeted way. Let's not help Assad. Remember, you don't want to help Assad with this, and Assad is also against these guys. And, and in and many ways, you, know you have to take the emotion out of well, this, Well, and I think we, the critical... We lost a journalist in a horrible way, and that's when everybody started reacting. Well, it certainly made the point pretty dramatically, to say the least. But I think the important thing for the president here is to move with Congress. Uh, that is to not do this on his own, to make everybody put their fingerprints on the decision and say yay or nay and go home and justify it. If they skip doing that, then I think they'll, he'll have missed the chance to get the American people behind him in a bipartisan sense. And clearly that's what he was doing in that press briefing this week. At least, at least it seemed that way. Lots more ahead, including the debut of our brand new partnership with Facebook. But first, our powerhouse puzzler. We're shaking it up this week. Congressman Cole has the question for the roundtable. Congressman? Well, my question is this. What political figure is the only person to ever be the most valuable player in the Orange Bowl twice? Got that? Back with the answer in two minutes. This week's puzzler from Congressman Cole. What political figure was named MVP of the Orange Bowl twice? Let's see your guesses. Hope well, I are. heard the cameraman, but it's also... I, I know, the, the cameraman <laughs> kind of gave it away. But they I were excited. Remember, I do remember Congressman Watts from Oklahoma, so that was a help. <laughs> I'd say S Steve Largent, Congressman. He was not listening to the cameraman. <laughs> He's just a Watts man. And the answer yeah. is... J.C. Watts. Bonus points, what position actually. did he play? Oh, no. Quarterback, quarterback. <laughs> well, you got that right, you got that right. Okay. <laughs> Former Oklahoma Congressman J.C. Watts was named MVP in 1980 and 1981 after back-to-back -back Orange Bowl victories over Florida State. He did play quarterback for the Oklahoma Sooners back in 90 seconds with the debut of our brand new partnership with Facebook. Facebook Find of the Week. We're excited to team up to track the biggest political stories that you're talking about online. Each week, we'll spotlight one of the top topics starting to trend on Facebook pages. This week, it's a shocking video reigniting the shark debate over gun control. Trending right now, our Facebook Find of the Week. What's burning up news feeds? The firestorm over kids and guns. At home, a debate tonight prompted by a video of a nine-year-old girl at a gun range in Arizona learning to shoot a powerful automatic weapon. A tragedy captured on video. All right, go ahead and give me one shot. This girl firing an Uzi at a shooting range. She loses control of the gun, accidentally killing her instructor. No federal law prohibits kids on gun ranges, but now new calls for restrictions on the weapons they should be handling. So is a nine-year-old too young to fire an Uzi? Let's take on our Facebook Find of the Week. And the roundtable is ready to weigh in. I'm going to start with you, Matt Dowd. Should a nine-year-old be able to handle an Uzi or be able to touch an Uzi or any gun? Well, the obvious answer to that is uh, no to the Uzi. I mean, I've shot an Uzi on fully automatic, and uh, and I had a hard time holding it steady recoil. because it well it, it automatically pulls up and over. And that I've also shot a Gatling gun, but that's a whole other other story. I wouldn't recommend a Gatling gun to a nine year old either. To me, <laughs> or any gun. <laughs> well, I think I've I've I have boys. I've trained them on BB guns first, and then 22s, and you and do all that. And they do that, that across the country, and certainly. And target shooting, but there's no real purpose in an Uzi other than. There's no hunting purpose in it or target purpose in an Uzi. What I think is amazing about this, this place called Bullets and Burgers, um, which is an amazing thing. It's almost like, and it's on the side of the road. It's like a fireworks. Drive through gun They range. said they were going to give gun safety and gun, gun education on that. It's almost like going to a fireworks stand on the right. side of the road and expecting to get fire safety regulations. I think this is awful tragedy for her and the guy that it, was it, killed. It, everyone agrees it's, it's a terrible, terrible tragedy. But will it be viewed as 
an accident that will never happen again, or, or do you think something broader will come of this? No, I, the, this gun control debate is not happening in this country. It's just not. And the, we have New Mexico, Oklahoma here, they can tell you it's not happening in their states. And, um, and I, I think it's outrageous for a nine-year-old child to have a Uzi in her hands. Governor? I think there are a lot of questions. In the, I'm, I'm a Westerner, NRA endorsed uh, when I was running for office, but I think it's reached the point where it's not just common sense, but you're not going to deal with this issue nationally. The Congress isn't going to touch it. So it has to be states. Now, Arizona won't do a thing, I can tell you. But, for instance, Connecticut has had a limit on uh, kids using firearms. But I think there's some more basic questions, Martha. Number one, where were the parents in all this? Secondly, this entrepreneur... Apparently they were right, right there. there. Uh, yeah, apparently they were right there. No, my there. point was, where were the parents? Why did they permit this? Should a child at nine have access to a Uzi and these, you know, gun tourism entities. I mean, it's a free market, the and they're very popular the in the West. Well, I think, uh, frankly, uh, you know, again, obviously a tremendous tragedy. I agree with the governor. I think this is probably something that's dealt with at the state level and local level. I think you'll actually see a lot of people, uh, you know, doing best practices at gun range and probably stopping this sort of thing. But I don't think this is uh, an opening for some big sweeping national federal no. gun control. I, I want to move on to immigration, President. Obama, it looks like, maybe putting the brakes on using executive power, changing immigration laws in any big way till after the midterms. And Bill Richardson, this may be why. Take a look at some of these quotes in the Washington Post from Democrats in tight Senate races. To me, securing our borders has to be the priority, and that should be the president's focus. Senator Hagan, this is an issue that I believe should be addressed legislatively and not through executive order. Is this what's behind the potential delay? Yeah, I think politics is behind the potential delay. Needless to say, I want to see all those Democrats reelected. But I also, not just because I'm a Hispanic, I feel the president should move with the executive order uh, to halt deportations or reduce them. I, I think he kind of made this commitment. I think it will also, policy-wise, it makes sense uh, because the Congress has been unable to pass comprehensive in immigration, not just pass it, but not even consider it. But, but Some elements it also in the Congress. Congress. But it also, no, the, politically it also makes sense. Look, the people who are going to vote against Democrats on the basis of liberal immigration are already going to vote against Democrats. You're not going to change a vote on this. What you might do is get voters out who are disillusioned with the president on the issue of immigration, and that seems but, but this, to be this is a, a long, smarter this thing This is to a long-term political problem for the Republicans in this. They That's may right. win the small battle of nothing happening this year, but the long battle of this country and the growth of the Latino population presents itself in a very bad way for Republicans in the midst of this. And they cannot win. They may win a midterm, but what I think is going to happen I think it's going to happen for many voters on immigration, a lot of things. It's going to be like kids are excited around for Christmas, but they wake up on Christmas morning after Election Day and realize they didn't get what they wanted. And that's what most voters are going to feel after this election. Okay. I think the I, damage, I, I, Martha, to, to Republicans is 2016. The Hispanic right. voters are going to remember this, and they're Quick growing thoughts, close well, Look, the president's never going to get immigration legislation when he acts unilaterally. First of all, he is undercutting congressional authority, uh, and he is breeding enormous distrust on the other side. I think once you make a deal with him, he won't keep the deal. So I think the president uh, is wise to pull back here. He's clearly doing it for short-term tactical reasons. But I think if he wants a bill before the end of his presidency, he won't act unilaterally. He'll actually work with Congress. He hasn't done that so far. He's not and and some final thoughts on, <laughs> on Senator Gillibrand's new book. Senator Gillibrand has this new book, and a People magazine expert uh, excerpt includes this. While I was on the elliptical machine, many of my older male colleagues felt compelled to offer advice such as this gem. Good thing you're working out because you wouldn't want to get porky. I'm starting with you, Pokey <laughs> Roberts. Look, do, is would this, that happen is on the hill? just in? Men are sexist on Capitol Hill? Wow, this is a, a brand new uh, revelation. I, I'm sort of surprised that they'd say anything about her weight, but, uh, you know, Does anything... that surprise you, Congressman? I, I'm astonished. I mean, yeah. really... Uh, yeah. Uh, she, they, they, these guys are so lucky. She could have ended about half a dozen political careers, <laughs> uh, and probably should have. Uh, you know, if that's going to be the attitude and rhetoric. No, 
you know, I, yeah. I, I know I think the so. answer. Because I think so, because it impugns when she doesn't name them. First all of all, of I think it shines a great lens on the institutions of this country that we think we've, we've grown so much and we're so past all this. Well, we're not past all this. And some of the it's, worst it's criticism... Not just the hill. Some okay. of the worst <laughs> criticism <laughs> is women on women. If you ever no, sit in a room and no. watch how they talk about well, other come women... On, come, come on, come on. That's not true. Come on, sister. <laughs> but she should have named names. She should have named names. better. At least their hands weren't on her knee when they were saying it. Okay, thanks, Koki. That's the dramatic video that sparked so much outrage. Baltimore Ravens star Ray Rice shown dragging his then girlfriend out of an elevator after punching her in the face. Rice was suspended for just two games. And this week, NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell said that was too short. The roundtable is back now to weigh in. Bill Richardson, did the NFL have to make that change because of the outrage over Rice's actions? They had to make that change. You know, sports, they're, they sometimes get behind the times on a lot of stuff. On domestic violence, this seems to be a persistent problem. Uh, I think the commissioner was right to say, I didn't go far enough. Not a we man who usually admits <laughs> mistakes readily. Oh, no, he really, but this really was a so major hard. mistake. I mean, this was absolutely outrageous and and it is absolutely also true that uh, too many people get away with domestic violence in this country uh, women are killed every single day in this country by their partners and the idea that uh, sports figures just get a slap on the hands gives other men permission to go ahead and do was this all also maybe to appease female fans it's well, about 50 percent now yeah well, yeah the f fastest growing part of the nfl who watches it are female fans i think that the Commissioner's been slow to act on a whole bunch of things. He was slow to act on head injuries, very slow to act, and very little that he did at first on that until forced to do. This one is another one. And we had a conversation about sexism in the Senate. <laughs> It's sexism in the football, sexism in the NFL, and he needs to do much more. Congressman, just quickly, Michael Sam was, was cut. I think by the he'll Rams. get picked back up. Look, he's a great player. He, he had has several a sacks. Uh, that team was just deep at that position. He's got a future. Redskins. I think he, I, the Redskins should pick him up. That would totally complicate. <laughs> of course, you can't say Redskins. That would, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. Would, it would totally complicate the political correctness if Michael <laughs> it, Sam it, got yeah, picked up would, by the Redskins. <laughs> that would be a tough one. <laughs> Thanks to all of you. Thanks for joining us on Sunday.